And we're on. Back. What's up, everyone? Episode 10. And we're doing all right. We've been doing better as the fucking Sugar Show team. We've been doing better. But. So we got some breaking news. No one's heard. Um, what's today? Uh, Thursday? The. How many days out are we? 20. We're like two weeks out about. Um. 20th, yeah. You saw it called me yesterday and said that I had tested positive for a banned substance called Osterine or something like that. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Osterine. Um, they said it was such a, um, such a small amount that it uh, pretty much has to be a tainted supplement, which is um, what, it, what it comes down to, I think, is what a tainted supplement is, is a supplement that doesn't have that ingredient in the ingredients or whatever. Yeah, it's not mentioned in the ingredients, and then that's that's pretty much what it is. So, like, what we think it was, what we pretty much know it was, was the caffeine pills. The caffeine pills, that were they were like $6 pills that we got at one stop. And uh, I'm, we're about 90% sure we're going to find out, but the, we think those have it in it. Jeff Novinsky from uh, the head of USADA said they have problems with that company anyway. High performance. Hopefully we can get a lawsuit against him. I mean, it's not officially that for sure, but um, he said they said they've had problems with that company before having tainted supplements, and they also make a product called Ostra Pro or something that has that ingredient in it. Um, so that's the thing. If if it if the same machine made Osterine, and then the next time they made caffeine, maybe a little tiny bit of it moved over. Same thing happened to Tim Means. He was taking a creatine completely legal and uh it ha he tested positive for osterine he got suspended for six months got pulled out two weeks before his main event with cowboy Cerrone, and there was like one billionth or something of a molecule in him not even enough to boost his performance at all but cost him 15 grand had to get an attorney and then was out for six months but still chance for plan or b right yeah so they have uh sample a and sample b um i Either you, when you get the email, you either sign off saying yeah I took it, or you say no I didn't. Um, I want to test sample B, so that's what we're doing. We're testing sample B. Um, fuck, it sucks, man. It's like getting punished for something you didn't do. Yeah, it would be different if we were like, okay, we're hiding it, trying to take something, but we we're not fucking stupid. We know you saw it was gonna catch everything, so it's like, I don't know. It it it, it is our fault. But at the same time, it's not at all because well, it was a it, fucking caffeine pill. Like the, the ingredients in the caffeine pill, are, everything I take is USADA approved. Like I know what I'm taking. It's like I literally, on the back of the ingredients, it's all fine. Everything's fine. So that's literally something I didn't even do. Um, so they said the chances of me fighting are very, very slim. Um, fucking suck. Can't can't fucking believe it. Like especially we get all the way through the fight camp, we leave next Wednesday. Like it was a tough fight camp. Like there was a lot of pain involved, a lot of pushing through, being really severely hurt, and ready to fucking go. But this all of a sudden slaps us in the face randomly. Couldn't getting ready to spar. I walk into the locker room and I see Sean in tears. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? He said I just got an email and I talked to Jeff Novinsky and it's like, holy shit, are you fucking kidding me? It's yeah. fake. It doesn't even seem real. Yeah, I can't believe it, man. Like, it fucking sucks. But I guess we'll find out and just start rolling with it. There's nothing we can do now. Well, I think in the suspension, we'll be like, uh, like you said, Tim Means and the people that we know that have went through this who spent $15,000, $20,000 on lawyer fees and stuff just to, you know, it's like, fuck, it's like not even, why would I pay $15,000 to like, I didn't even do anything wrong. Literally didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's why I, f I feel like there's got to be a way that you can, s if it pops up in those pills, which it's going to, I think, there's got to be a way you can sue them. Like, that's Jeff, fucking with your whole life. Jeff said they're just, they have so much money. That they can just fight it? Jesus Christ, dude. He said that uh, 
there's they're already getting sued by another um, by a, by another professional athlete not in the UFC um, that tested for a similar same thing that's going on with me so they're already getting um, sued for some but it's like fuck so I'll be out for minimum six months you know I think the maximum is two years if I don't fight it or whatever so and it's I don't know it's just like a perfect time for me to work on all these all this stuff I'm learning it's just surrounded by the good folks and on the negative it's like a super negative it fucking sucks like I had so many you know I, 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 I literally feel like my life is purpose right now is to fight like to to perform and go out there and fight and get it taken away it, it sucks but it's just time to pra- practice stoicism and all this stuff I've been learning and yeah, it's hard. And, it, and it sucks because it's like the main sad thing is about all the fans and all the people and all the people who like book fights and got tickets and all the people that support you. That's the hardest thing. But like, you guys gotta understand, like, didn't do fucking one thing wrong. We know, we know the shit we're taking. We're, we know what we're doing, and this randomly popped up. It could literally happen to fucking anyone, especially such a small amount that doesn't even affect your performance. Like. What the hell? There's literally nothing we can do about that. So we didn't make the mistake. Something fucked up happened. So we're just going to have to get to the bottom end. Just like Sean said, like it could be way worse. This is a perfect chance to practice all the stuff we've been talking about. You know, like it could be way worse. Could have a family, could have kids, could be like relying on that show money. Like it's, it's still terrible and it sucks. But like now now we're going to have to make the best of it. If it's six months off, whatever, we're going to make the fucking best of it. We're going to like learn. We're going to do a lot of jujitsu. We're going to come back way stronger than we expected and just turn this into a good thing. But right now we're just going to have to fucking deal with it, man. Can't believe it. There's still <clears throat> there's still that hope that sample B comes back negative. Um, and I wanted to – this isn't in the media or anything right now. Um, so this is going to be the first time people hear about it. And I don't think I'm going to get that, that uh, people are going to be like, oh, he's on steroids, all that shit. I don't think that's going to be the case. Obviously, there's going to be people out there. Say, like, fucking look at me. Do I look like I'm on goddamn steroids? Seriously, looks like you're going to break right now. Like a toothpick. But the, it's weird because it's this same shit is popping up. This is where people, guys are getting popped for the same shit. Like, our jiu-jitsu instructor, Kim got popped for it. Tim Means got popped for it. Tom Lawler got popped for it. All these random people who aren't stupid. We know USADA is going to catch fucking everything. We know they randomly show up. So it's like, there's not there's not much you... What the fuck can you do, dude? I don't know. We're going to get it figured out and move on. But other than that, like, how was the L.A. trip overall? Oh yeah, that <clears throat> LA trip was fun on Fo- uh, the UFC on Fox. It was a good time. It was quick, quick trip. We weren't even in LA for a full day, so just kind of got in. The Fox was fun. DC and Kenny Florian are <clears throat> cool dudes. Um, Karen Bryan, she's cool. Was the studio pretty cool? The studio was super cool. Um, Did they hit you out of nowhere with the power punch machine? Well, they told me about 20 minutes, and I said, they said, you're going to hit this. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Did, like, you, I was <laughs> did nervous. you think you were going to get 300? I was like, god damn, everyone up here hits hard. Like, those are all power punchers. Well, and they're big fucking dudes. So I started warming up my shoulder for literally, like, tw- the whole time until, until it was time to hit it. I'm like, I'm going to swing this motherfucker with everything I got. <laughs> and I swung everything, my hips and everything into it. Kind of hurt my foot, actually, pivoting in those shoes. I was limping away after, but... It was, it was fun. The punch, the, I'm super curious because I got a higher score than Woodley, but if you ask like me, like who would rather get punched by Woodley or Sean, I'm like, I would rather get hit by me. I ain't, would rather not get hit by him. So it's, I don't know how that machine judges, but fuck it. But we'll I still it. hit harder than him, I guess. <laughs> well, you got big ass fists. Show your fists in the camera. I do have big hands, and like I, I just, I think I rotated everything perfectly and hit it just perfect. So hit it right on the fucking money. Was like. A behind the scenes in studio pretty cool or what you expected similar to like yeah it was it was super cool this i don't know it was pretty much what i kind of expected the, the whole fox studio is like not just the ufc fox but the whole fox like building was insane it was like a gated community it was huge people driving around in golf carts like look at a movie set almost Oh, really? Damn, that's cool. Your fucking fro was looking prime on that one. Yeah, that was... Danny did good at the fro on that one. The outfit was fun. It was... Fuck, dude. Media fight week was going to be so fun. 
all this shit I'm gonna miss out. God, and I just keep coming back to just could be worse, and I just have to keep reminding myself that. But every like I'll be playing Xbox and someone would say, "Hey, you doing open workout? Are you excited for your fight?" And it's just like, fuck, I can't get away from it. Yeah, it's just like Jesus Christ, dude. There's there's still that hope, but. I don't know. I've never had to deal with something like this because it's gay because you're ready to go and the worst part is you didn't do anything. That's the fucking worst part. You're going to get punished. All this shit's going to happen. Missing out on you a didn't do anything. payday. Yeah, that was going to be a... That was gonna, you were going to make history that night. I'm fucking 100% sure of it. It's fucked. Um, but you're 23 years old and it's just going to give you more time to heal your foot, heal your hip, yeah. grow in jiu-jitsu, get stronger... Like, if it does happen, you get suspended, I guarantee you, I fucking promise you, you're going to come back better than you've ever came back. Yeah. A long break to just heal all your joints, heal your hands, heal your hip, heal your... Like, people are not going to want to fuck with you when you come back from this. A hundred percent. We're not going to, like, sit there and feel sorry for yourselves and, like, play the blame game and, like, do all this shit. We're going to fucking... We're going to make the best of it. A hundred percent. Um... But other than that, how are you doing? Shit. I'm doing all right, too. I, I, I was rolling into sparring like, okay, baby, three rounds for sure. I was a little bit nervous for your rounds because your rounds on Saturday, but, dude, your rounds Wednesday were superb. Like, it was hard It was hard going into this sparring knowing, like, well, probably not fighting, and we're still going to do three rounds. Dude, but I rolled up into sparring. I had good energy. Good, I was jacked. I was get, just about to get changed. I don't answer my phone ever. I get so many calls and I just don't answer my phone. And it was Jeff. And I'm like, well, I wonder what he's calling for. Like, because I had a question about an inhaler. And I, I was just about to get dressed out. For whatever reason, I answered it. And then it was like right before sparring. And like at first, I was like, is this real? Like, is this real life? I just tested positive for some, sh like, some shit. I don't even know what it is. Like, is this real? How does that even happen? Holy, it and it nuts. hit you. And then it like, then it like hit me, and I was like, oh, it hurt. Oh, I felt like fucking puking too. That whole my round, yeah. And then I went and did three, and I was like, fuck. Before just bouncing around, I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna puke. Like, I don't feel good. I feel like this is just not even real life. God damn. But at least no one fucking died. No one in your family yeah. died. None of our close friends died. You didn't fucking break your spine. Yeah. Like, but still, it's like holy shit. Yeah. Have you ever been in any street fights? Not, not really. Um, no, not, not really. Not like a few scratch. scuffles? Yeah, I mean, I think I beat up a kid or two, but I didn't really... F you ever got beat up? Uh-uh. Did you? Fuck, dude. I went to an all-Native American school. I was getting my fucking ass whooped by this Indian one time, and like, <laughs> literally the school aides sitting there watching... And I'm on the ground getting punched, like, what the fuck? And she, this kid's just whooping my ass. I've been in quite a few street fights. One that sticks out the most probably is, like, there was this kid in high school. Um, he's kind of a bully, kind of a bully. Like, and I don't know, I kind of had an ego. I liked the UFC, and I, I, I didn't mind fighting either, and I wrestled and stuff. And he's like, meet me at uh, the park. Bring all your friends. So literally, I probably had 10, 15 friends behind me. He had 10, 15 friends behind him. Um, showed up in the park, I had my glasses on, I, I, I chugged a monster, I was, I don't know, great, I was in 10th grade, maybe, chugged a fucking monster, I'm like, I'm gonna get charged up, fuck this kid up, and like, I remember putting the monster in cold drink on my hands, thinking it's gonna freeze my hands and make my hands harder, <laughs> so I show up to the park, take my glasses off, I see the kid, I roll up to him, like, dukes up, try to throw a big right hand, we wind up in an over-under clinch, like, you're pretty much hugging, I was like, oh yeah, baby, I'm gonna toss this boy, Go to arch him and try to toss him. We're on the cement, and I toss him right on top of me, and I go, <laughs> and I'm on the ground. But then I bridge up into a single leg, lift him up, slam him, get on top, and I'm punching him. Boom, boom, boom. Kind of like bouncing his head off the concrete a little bit, and then I get off of him, and he's fucking tired, and I'm gassed out. I'm about to puke that monster up, and I'm like, what would that fucking kid do if I I was down there? And I toe punched him in the face, but I didn't do it like hard to kill him. I gave him a solid little little boot to the mouth, and all his friends are like, what the fuck, you cheap motherfucker, blah, 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 blah. And then I see a shadow behind me, and this kid comes up behind me, and I, like, duck. 
I don't know why I ducked, but I must have saw him in the corner of my eye and he swung like half a pool stick at my head. Woof, and it hit my friend in the shoulder. I ducked it, turned around, that kid was running away to his Jeep. Damn. And, then, and then the cops roll up and I'm so fucking tired from the fight. The fight was probably 45 seconds long. And I'm gas. I'm like, I'm not even going to run because I don't have the fucking energy to run. <laughs> cops show up. They His friends pick him up off the ground and put him in the like their Jeep, pull off. The cops catch him. And I'm sitting on the swing set when the cops come. <laughs> and they give me a, like, a ticket after for being in the park after 10. They gave him an assault ticket because he's known for like fights and trouble and stuff. And Damn. That was one of my better ones. Then the, the week later, I had to fight his brother at the state fair. Um, and his brother was like a bigger, stronger kid. And uh, we were getting in our car, leaving the state fair. And uh, they're like, hey, the Colton kid wants to fight you. And I'm in the car. I'm like, fuck. So I get out, I'm like, there's no choice. I, you be a bitch or I'll go fight this kid. Go out, Duke's up. I hit him with a hard right hand right in the face. Boom, like a full power one. He eats it. Hit him again. Boom, with another right hand. And then he puts his hands down. He's like, all right, we cool? I'm like, yeah, we're cool. <laughs> Give him skin. Fucking peace out. I don't know. He didn't swing at you? Oh, yeah, he was swinging haymakers at me. Just didn't connect? But I was kind of keeping my punches a little more straight. And they're just connected, but... That's I don't know, cool. but I'm surprised you haven't gotten more fights from all the people that eye you down and fuck with you because you're skinny and small. I don't, I don't like fighting. Like in the cage, it's fun. Well, it's, it's like e chess, but outside, I'm not. Yeah. Not really. And when we were younger, it was like, oh man, we we're just so insecure that we felt yeah. like we needed to, and it's like not like be cocky or anything. But now we know we can fuck someone up. We have to scrap every day. We're fighting every day. That's our job is to learn to fist fight. Mm -hmm. So it's like. When, when that kind of stuff happens, unless you're getting bullied. Like, if, if I see someone getting bullied or someone's trying to bully me, that kind of, like, pisses me off for some reason. Then I want to bully that person. Yeah, fuck yeah. But other than that, like, imagine I was thinking about the other day. Imagine if, like, cops had to be a blue belt. That was a requirement to be a blue belt in jiu-jitsu for a police officer. That's such a good fucking idea. Man, how much such would that change? Damn. Especially, like... Especially all the kids that like got picked on in high school and never had any power, and then all of a sudden go through a police academy and they get a gun and a badge and a taser, and they're like, "Holy, I have power now!" And they're just super insecure or get an altercation, and they're like, "Ah, oh, they've never been in one." But like, jujitsu would humble a lot of people, get rid of a lot of their ego. Man, I think that would that would be that'd be sweet. That's a good idea, Tim that, for president. That would be fucking huge. No, Red Hawk for governor. <laughs> Uh, um, another thing I want to talk about too is like literally everyone you see everyone you see everyone you meet everyone you see on Instagram that looks like their life's perfect everyone's suffering in some way in, in some way and no, no one's life is just sitting there perfect and peachy and they, like it may look like it on Instagram but that's not like I'm going through shit I have stress all the time Sugar's going through shit has stress all the time like and now we got this thrown on us so Everyone's suffering, like, like, literally you just got to wake up and have good habits and start, like, we've talked about this before, but eating healthy helps, and it's tough, man, like, every, everyone's suffering. You just got to have to get control of your thoughts, like, if you're not in control of your thoughts, your thoughts are going to take over you. Dude, my thoughts were taking over me last night. Fuck, I was so, I was a wreck last night. Well, when, you, to, when you called me and you were like, I'm listening to Eckert with Danny yeah, in the backyard, I was like, nice. fuck, I was, I was like, god damn it, that's perfect. I'm like, that's yeah. so good. It was hard. Like, we went outside, Danny and I went outside, threw on some Eckert, um, The New Earth, restarted that book, listening to that, um, and my brain, I just could not, like, I just couldn't wrap my head around that I'm getting in trouble for something I didn't do, and then I was like, it was just taking over my thoughts. I was like, I need to go on a walk. So we took the dogs on a walk. I mean, that kind of helped. I was listening to uh, The Obstacle is the Way. Um, kind of, and just kind of, which it was, that helped a lot too. Kind of just talking about how quit making it such a big deal. I, 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 like, could be way worse, all this stuff. So, I mean, doing that helped. Um, I definitely smoked some, smoked some marijuana. That helped a lot. I took some um, hits out of my vaporizer. And that really, I think that was, like, the biggest thing. It helped me really change my perspective about everything I'm like okay I my life I'm surrounded by all this good I always say that I'm surrounded by all the good folks on the negative like 
my life. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. I get, I can wake up. I get. A, I'm gonna wake up, play Fortnite, make breakfast, hang out with Danny, come do a podcast, go to wrestling later, like all these positive things, and I'm just focused on this one negative thing. It's a huge negative, and it's just. But it's just like I'm letting it control me, and I know it's just a matter of, a matter of me really wrapping my head around it and just trying to just win the battle in my head. What am I going to think about? How am I going to make today good? I have enough reasons to make it bad. How can I make it the good? So I've just been battling with that in my head all ever since the phone call. Yeah. It sucks. And I think it'll be easier, too, once we kind of find out, okay, are you suspended? Okay, did plan B come back positive? Okay, was it the caffeine pill? So there's a lot of questions, so it's going to be hard to get control of those thoughts because they're going to constantly be wondering, we don't because we don't know what the future is going to be like. We don't know what the next month's going to be like. We don't know yet. But once we find out, it'll be a little bit easier, I think. Yeah. But, like, you're a mentally strong motherfucker, dude, and you're not going to let, like, negative thoughts control you. Like, every time you're being negative, like, it really, it, it sucks because it is, in a way, it's a mental weakness, especially if you keep dwelling on it. And, like, absolutely. Not just for you, but other people. If you're negative and you're having, like, like negative thoughts like jealousy or, like, the blame game or all that stuff, that shit's toxic, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, it's hard to be around people that are like that, that are negative and constantly, like, poor me or why am I like this or, like, jealous or just – that shit is toxic. And you'll be around that and it'll, like, it'll give off toxic vibes to other people. Like, and it's mental weakness. It's weird. Like, I can feel – like last night, Danny, we were in the kitchen. Like I could feel the energy I was putting off. Was that negative? Like why me? Like what the fuck? All this negative energy, and I could feel myself putting it off. And that well, once I started feeling it, then I could kind of then I could start redirecting my thoughts and kind of getting getting a hold of it. Then those would come back. But I felt I told Danny like God, I'm sorry. I'm making like I'm definitely putting off this energy. I don't want to be, and I'm trying not to. It's just me. Having to go, you know, this is just another opportunity to grow, and I'm gonna look back on this. Like I grew a lot from that, cause I'm pra- I get to practice all these things I learned. I don't really some, you know, our lives are pretty not very stressful. Not a lot of shit happens to where it's super negative. Now if there's something like okay, now I can really practice stoicism and just get over this and be, you know, find happiness in this situation. Yeah, and the thing is like. Just like Eckert says, like, all those problems, like, worried, worried about the past, worried about the future. Like, if, most of the time, if you're just living in the moment, the moment's pretty good. And all the problems in your mind are, like, just made up and not even happening. So, like, just breathing and practicing, being in the moment. And it's nice because, like, I feel like marijuana is kind of the quick way to live in the moment. Like, you just smoke weed and then all of a sudden you're like, whew, I'm chilling. But I'm glad we meditate, you know. Like, meditate does that, too. Makes you learn how to just feel your breath, feel gravity pull you down, feel your breath all the way into your stomach, all the way out. Like we've been doing a thing before dinner. We've been trying to take five deep, with our eyes closed, five deep breaths and just be right present. Try to do five deep breaths, close your eyes, and just have your thoughts thinking about the breath. See if they're wandering around. Like that's a hard thing to do and it takes lots of practice. But man, if you can, if you learn how to meditate, meditate and learn to be in the present moment like that's a fucking for real that's a superpower yeah that's like that was the first thing i did when i got home i did a 10 minute headspace you said you've been practicing like the head like meditating without the headspace no guided or nothing you still been doing that much yeah fuck it's hard for me i like to i like to have the guided for now like i feel like it's really helped especially last night right right when i got home from the gym i laid on the couch did a 10 minute one and that at the moment like because i was pretty fired up just like, but at the right after I got done with that, I felt at ease. But then shortly after, my brain started going crazy again. I'm like fuck. I know. I was worried too. I was like, I know, I know, like how bad you're beating yourself up. But I also know like how mentally, like when you're the tough, you're one of the toughest people I know mentally. And this is just gonna toughen you up more mentally. Yeah. It's just gonna be fucking it's fucked up. Super it, fucked up. It I, sucks that too. It's like they said that I tested such a small amount. That it has to be attained in supplements. It's like if you guys know that and you guys are telling me that, why am I getting why why if you guys know that it's a tainted supplement, how am I getting in trouble for it? If it's such a small amount, like, and you guys are telling me this, 
like, why is that? Is that not science? Like, they're not science that backs that. Like, that it's such a small amount. I don't know. It's just frustrating. Yeah, seriously, it really is. We get some good fan questions. Um, yeah. Real quick though, I want to talk oh, about sorry. like, no, it's all right. Like the leading cause of death in the USA. Like, what is the leading? Yeah, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Obesity. What's no. the le- leading cause of death in the USA? Bet you it's heart disease. What's the leading cause of death in the USA? According to Medical News Today, heart disease is the leading cause of death in the U.S. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women in the U.S. and also the leading cause of death worldwide. So more than half of the deaths that occur as a result of heart disease are in men. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, okay, so number one's heart disease, number two's cancer, four's accidents, five strokes, six Alzheimer's disease, seven's diabetes, ten is suicide. Like, a lot of those right there, like, you can fix with a fucking healthy diet. Heart disease comes from, like, your lifestyle, what you're eating and all that shit. Like, it pisses me off. It fucking pisses me off because people complain about weed or complain about us doing mushrooms, but then they'll go to the doctor and the doctor and say they're in pain and the doctor will subscribe them opioids like opiates painkillers painkillers fuck people up painkillers fuck people up people get addicted to them fucks their liver up it fucks their whole life up and the doctors has no problem saying yep i'll just give you these painkillers it's like dude it pisses me off bad i could go off about that shit for a long time and it's weird how people don't really have much like oh i'll just take it it's yeah, not, I'll take it. The no, doctor says. The doctor says, and doctors know. They doctors probably know marijuana for like people that are twenty five and older or mushrooms. That they probably want to keep that shit illegal because it opens up people's minds and it makes people start really thinking about health and thinking about loving other people. Like, I bet they do want to fight because take away opiates that takes a, away a lot. How many how many people die of opiate addiction? How many people die a year of opiate addiction in USA? Overdose death rates. More than 72,000 Americans died from drug overdose in 2017 from prescription meds. Isn't that what Mac Miller just died on? I think he must, might have di- died from heroin. No. Seriously? I think so, dude. But I'm not 100% sure. No, neither. America's opioid ad- epidemic could claim 1 million lives by 2020. It's wild. It is wild. Why aren't we worried about that shit? Or why aren't we worried about heart disease and, like, obesity? There's more kids that are obese in the U.S. that have ever been in history. And they're not worried about McDonald's. You can go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac and a McFlurry that's... Two bucks. ...fucking toxic to your body. That's two bucks, but that's no problem. Oh, give a kid a Frappuccino. Oh, cute. Give the kid, he likes that sweet Frappuccino, and it's poisoning his body. Dude, it hurts my heart seeing little, little kids, like, eating and drinking pop and eating McDonald's. Like, I'm like... It's sad. It really is. It is sad because they don't know, and that's the cheapest way to go about it. It's fucking sad, dude. And it makes me mad that people don't understand. They don't. They just like, oh. But if someone was like smoking a cigarette, that would be the end of the fucking world. Oh my god, they're smoking a cigarette. That kills people, you know. It's like, well, yeah, obesity kills people too. It gives people heart attacks. Gives people heart heart disease. But that's not the U.S.'s main focus because they take care of that. Then a lot of people. They take away fast food, take away all this junk food in gas stations and stuff, and then people aren't getting sick. They're not going to the doctors. They're not having to do all this. So it's a, I think it's a big fucking, oh for sure, it's scam. It is shit. But um, we're gonna do some fan questions. Um, uh, any chance we could get some guests for the future? Um, we're planning on it. We're planning on. Well, now we'll see what happens with Sean's thing, but we're gonna make a trip to. Paul Check's house. He invited us to his house. So we're going to go there and record a podcast. We have a friend, yeah, Dr. Andy Galpin. We'll probably have him on. We haven't asked Ryan Holiday yet, but hopefully we can have him on. So we're going to have a lot of different guests, a lot of guests that are just way smarter than us and that just can help everyone. Um, thoughts on the keto diet? Nah. Do you all use chiro, chiropractic? I do go to the chiropractor. I go to a guy named Mitchell, Scott Mitchell. Um, we've been going to him for about three years now. 
and I was going every week. Now I'm just kind of going when I feel like I need to. But I, I think, you know, for me, when my neck gets out of place from wrestling, grappling, um, I like going there and get cracked back into place. And it feels, I, I think it feels really good. Hell yeah. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't do it too much. I try to just, like, do my, like, uh, this morning I did some some light kettlebell lifts, just, like, more physical therapy-type workouts. But what's the ultimate goal you both have during your career and lifetime? Uh... For, for me, like, for me, I, now I just want to, like, practice being present, being in the moment. It makes me feel really good, like, helping other people get more confident, people that I can see that, like, aren't confident, in themselves at all it makes me feel good doing that I definitely want to fight so I can test my skills I want to compete in jiu-jitsu so I can like prove my skills but ultimate goal is just to be comfortable I don't want to be super rich like I want to I want to have enough money to eat whatever food I want eat the most organic clean food I want if I have that then I'm good I have my relationships like my friends my family make sure all my relationships good and like Make sure I have like a good reputation, you know, just not be a liar, not be a, just a shitty fucking person. Just have a good reputation and all my relationships be really good. I think that's for me, that's my main thing. Yeah, um, I really want to break, you know, I've, I've, I've had in mind like since I started fighting, like ever since I kind of came about the UFC, I want to I want to be the biggest draw ever and I think I, I'm going to gonna be in a position to do that. Um, you know, that's kind of like a, a big goal, um, and like Tim said, just keep, keep learning how to be in the present moment. Like those are in work, have a bunch of internal goals, and like just becoming ha always happy with what I have, and not want, not needing more. Um, the richest person isn't who has the most, but it's who needs the least. And uh, try and just remind myself of that, and just keep learning and growing. Yeah, and I've been liking every morning. I've been doing this journal and shit, like write down kind of my thoughts, what my thoughts are, no matter what they are, just write them down on the paper, make sure they're like positive and make sure they're good. And then I write about four or five things that I'm thankful for that I have right now. And then I'll usually write down my goals for the day, for the day, whether it's fucking teach a couple good classes or spar, go to sparring, make sure I'm helping you like read. Sometimes I put that on there, listen to podcasts. Sometimes I put that on there. Um, someone asked, what's your favorite podcast? Go ahead. Um, it switches a lot. It's not like I just have one. Um, Joe Rogan's always going to be up there. Um, Aubrey Marcus has a good one. Um, I've been clicking, I have been going through YouTube, clicking on Chris D'Elia's, uh, just his YouTube page. <laughs> he has a lot of funny things on his podcast. He's yeah. fucking funny. Chris D'Elia cracks me. He's got to be, I off. think, the all-time funniest person to me right now. For me, I'm I'm not like huge on comedians. Like they they make me laugh, but that fucker cracks me up. But I, I like Aubrey Marcus podcast a lot. I like uh, the Jocko podcast is really good. Um, the Human Optimization with Kyle Kingsbury podcast is good. Sometimes Ben Greenfield's podcast is pretty good. He annoys me sometimes, but he's I feel like he's got a, got a lot of good info. So those are probably my favorites for now. Evan Duhig twenty two. I'm sub to Sugar for six months. Give me a shout out. <laughs> Which was that, Evan? <laughs> that's badass, Evan. I don't know what your Twitch name is, but that's fuck. Is that Don? Maybe I don't know. But I, I do. I, you know, I'm super into my Twitch channel. I'll probably get into it even more now that if I do get suspended. Uh, I was streaming this morning. You guys are the Twitch followers, like my subscribers on Twitch. Those guys are my dudes. I, those are the guys I talk like. If you guys want to ask me questions, talk to me, get to know me more. On a, like a, on like who I really am. I mean, I'm myself on Twitch. I play every day. I talk to you guys. It's fucking awesome. So, shout out to that dude. Yeah, like we get we have we have a good group of friends here in Arizona. But Sugar doesn't like to hang out with many people. He likes his Twitch family. So, that'll be perfect. Like if we do get suspended, whatever, we'll see. And then we can build our podcast. Make this podcast the best. Make his Twitch blow up. There's tons of other things that we can be thankful for that we can build on. Like, it's not the end of the world. Like, there's people in other countries that don't even have fucking fresh water. Like, Dude, there's I a was, lot to be thankful for. I was just, I was watching this Netflix thing, and it was, it was a, um, a bunch of series, and the, the second episode was, I didn't, I didn't push play, because I was getting done watching it, but 
or watch TV, but it was about about the water crisis in the world, like South Africa is soon not to have about, are they about to have, not have any fresh water that, that they can get on their own or something like that. It's scary, super scary. Fuck, it's scary and so sad. sad. Yeah, for sure. Um, Chicken Devin says, is your mom still active? I think she means Jehovah's Witness. If so, does she still invite you to the memorial every year? Yeah. I, well, she didn't invite me last year, but she has every year. The memorial's like, I think it's when Jesus was born and they go there and do something. But And I have some friends that are like, yeah, I go to the memorial every year. So that means I'm good. I'm good with God. He's cool with that. And I'm like, dude, if I'm going to go to the memorial, then... I'm gonna go to every fucking meeting and I'm gonna I'm gonna if I believe in that I'm gonna do it I'm not gonna oh yeah that's the truth but I'm gonna go this way but oh that's still the truth no so you think people do that just kind of out of fear a hundred percent a hundred percent if I go to the memorial Jehovah will know that I'm it's still in me but other than that I'm good this, yeah. this is crazy for sure out of fear um wax or bud you can only pick one for the rest of your life but but a hundred percent. Yeah. Wax I feel like gets you super high for a little bit and then you come down for pretty fast. Yeah, wax fucks me up way too bad. But which tattoo location was the most painful? Probably my ribs. God, dude, my ribs. <laughs> I got both sides done. Holy smokes! What about your chest and the sternum and that the owl? Bad too, but fuck, I don't know. They all I hate, like the. I don't know. I think the face tattoos hurt the least, so I'm probably just going to stick to the face. <laughs> I think any tattoo that's just directly on your bone, I think those are what hurts. But definitely my my ribs hurt bad. Did you guys try the blackout beta? Did you, Sean? Um, yeah, I played the blackout beta for, I played like four or five games, and it's like I'm so into Fortnite, you know, it's hard to, once you switch to a game, game where you can't build when you're used to building it, it really messed me up. Um, so I only played like five games, died super fast. Um, but for all the Fortnite guys out there, I jumped on a solo squads this morning, first game on. Never played solo squads, dropped a 10 bomb for the dub. First game on, I was losing my mind, it was insane. <laughs> Damn, that's sweet. It was sweet. Tim's not much of a gamer anymore. I like, I like, I like it. I, I could for sure game. If I didn't have like... A bunch of other shit to do? A bunch of other shit to do, like, I for sure could game, like, no problem. We used to play Call of Duty back in the day together, and that was fun. We had our, both of our game when we lived at a, our apartment together, we had both of our games set up right next to each other, both of our recliner chairs, and we'd game. <laughs> we had a bet with our friend JJ that if I if I won, he had to shave his eyebrows. If he won, then he got free privates, and I fucking was up. Those were the couple best. kills. Games. And he was sweating, but he came back. Fuck, pissed me. Those off. were the best games. What has fighting taught you about yourself? Whew, that's a deep question. I feel like that's a good question. Um, pretty much everything I know about myself kind of came from fighting. Like, as far as getting into this lifestyle. Man, for me, everything too. Everything I've learned in practice. Everything I've learned in fights. Like being just scared and nervous and not running away from it like going into it there's just so much I've learned from fighting that I'm so lucky like breaking my jaw and keeping going I never knew I had that in me I would, if I always thought man if I broke my jaw I'd sit down right there and call it but I kept fighting like kept trying to kill this guy and my fucking jaw's hanging off the the fighting has taught me so much like I'm so thankful for like I'm not exactly where I want to be. I'm not in the UFC fucking, uh, I think I will be soon, but it's taught me so much, and I wouldn't have picked any other career. 100% I wouldn't have. Um, damn it, I had another good question. I missed it, though. Hold on. How was your acid trip in Vegas? I didn't end up doing it. Sugar hogged it all. It was LSD anyway. But how was it? It was, it was pretty fun. I did it with Anastasia. She, it was pretty sweet. We had a projection screen on her on her wall, and watched like some trippy videos, and it, it was it was a good time. I had fun. Uh, not my favorite, definitely. We may have, we have some now that we can try and test out, but so we'll see. We'll let you guys know. What are some weigh in or fight day rituals you like to do? Uh, weigh in or fight day? Well, fight day we usually watch. Um, we like we've been watch we watch old fights, usually Connor fights. Um. 
You, way in just kind of cut way way in way in days. Well, I don't know. What what do you think? Well, after you cut weight, we try to refuel. Like we try to go backwards from where we came in. So after you weigh in, we don't just eat a bunch of junk. We eat a bunch of shit that our body's used to, that our body can digest. And it's like, okay, I know what that is. Like whole foods, good foods. And we don't drink liquids for about an hour and a half after. And then kind of rest, hang out with the friends, hang out with the family. Like it's almost like a celebration after weigh-ins. Like you got through the fight camp, you made weight. Like now it's time to have fun. Like all the work's done. Now it's time to have fun. And then we wake up in the morning and kind of get a light sweat, go over all our call outs, do, do a little bit of grappling, like hit some arm bars, hit some triangles, go through all of our special moves on the pads and just kind of like go through a little mental workout. Then we'll go eat breakfast usually, go back to the hotel, take a nap and just kind of chill out and get ready. Like the emotions are crazy that you go through when it's fight day and, and all that stuff, but it's pretty cool. It's like we're lucky we get to go through all that. Um, what was the, is it, is the struggle I get to make to the UFC for both y'all? What were some challenges? For you, I always think about it, like, all those little moments, like, you blew up into a star, like, David Nuzo, like, it, something in all those fights could have happened that changed the whole path of, like, the whole future, but, like, all those times you've just, you stayed in the moment, we had, we have so many memories of all your pro fights coming up. Mm-hmm. I, I, I fucking swear when I was little, I knew I was going to be a superstar and whatever I did. I just knew I was going to be. I've been saying that since I was a little kid. Like, my mom and dad both said, like, I was saying that stuff when I was little. Um, I knew I was going to, I didn't know what it was going to be. But um, I don't even remember. I don't even know what the... See, for me, I wasn't even really, like, I was like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know you could be a pro fighter. I didn't even know. I didn't even know, so I was just kind of learning along the way, um, for sure. What are your go-to choices for caffeine? Not those fucking caffeine pills that fucked me. God, dude, and like they, and then Jeff asked me, he's like, "Why didn't you put that on your, um, you saw the thing, like your supplements?" I'm like, "I didn't fucking think I put caffeine. Like I don't put coffee on there. Yeah, I didn't think caffeine, a caffeine pill, like all I thought." My thoughts about that were just basically a fucking liquid or a pill, a coffee pill. I was like, what the fuck? Why would I put a cap? Oh. Yeah. But ca- coffee's probably my go go to caffeine, for sure. What are some good books to prepare you for jujitsu? I think the Jocko book, Discipline Equals Freedom. I don't know. There's a ton. Unbeatable Mind, The Fighter's Mind. There's a bunch. Any Eckert, just being in the moment helps with jujitsu. For sure. Does your morning routine switch up fight week and day of the fight? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, usually fight week we start because you don't fight till a little bit later at night. Um, so let's say I should be fighting at probably around 6.30 in Vegas time, which isn't too bad, actually. Um, last fight we fought around like 8 or 9 or something a little bit later. So we try to stay up a little bit later, get our bodies used to being energized at that time of the day instead of kind of winding down from the night or from the day. So yeah, fight week's a little bit different. We try to stay up later and then wake up a little bit later in the afternoon. Um, so yeah, th- that does. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, how do you guys make your morning coffee? For me, I just have a little uh, tea kettle with the the uh, temperature on it, and I like to do an arrow press. I cook it at like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour it in there in the arrow press for three minutes. Press it down. Just and 100? 180. Oh. So I like the arrow press best because I feel like it's it's most quality caffeine. Do you add MCT oil to yours? Have you? Mariah has been making my coffees in the morning. We've been at, adding this vital proteins, collagen protein, oh, and then she adds coconut oil and then butter and then blends it. And it's Ooh. fucking crazy. Crazy good. What about you? Yeah, I've just been making uh, Aero Press with some MCT oil in it and some uh, like uh, coconut milk creamer. Nice. This guy says, do you guys believe in ghosts? Well, that's a good question. I never really... I don't know, man. I, I don't... What's what's the definition of a ghost? Let's see. Yeah, that's a good question. What is the definition of a ghost? As a noun, it means an apparition of a dead person which is believed to appear or become manifest to the Huh. 
I don't know. That's a I good don't know question. Either. I've never had any any crazy encounters that I'm like, what the fuck? That was paranormal. But I'm not saying that there's not. Like, no, there's no ghosts. Like, I don't really have any beliefs that I'm just like 100% on. I'll never change that belief except eating healthy. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe in a different dimension or it's just different. I don't know. I'd probably say, I don't, I don't want to say yes or no. I just don't know. Nice. This Paco says, how can I stop procrastinating? Stop. That's it. That's it, dude. Wake up and be like, okay. One time. Is my time. bitch ass thoughts in control of my life, or am I can in control of my life? Where do I want to be? What steps do I got to do to get there? And then just make those steps every fucking day and can stay consistent. It's a habit. It's just a habit. Like, that's all it is. Yep. Um. I like answering these fan questions. I hope you guys like it too. It's fun. I think it's a good time. Yeah, I think it's good too. But we had a lot more, but I think that that's what we're going to call it for today, guys. Um, like I said, sorry about this shit that happened, but there's nothing we can do. Didn't fucking do anything wrong, and we're going to do the best to just get it figured out. Maybe test B will come back and it's negative, but I don't know. I, we've never had to deal with something like this, so we're just going to try to make the best steps and just stay positive and do what we can and just fucking handle it and not just mope around the biggest thing you're sorry about yeah is sean competing but letting down like you guys and i know all you guys wanted to see sean fight and knock someone out but it, these months are going to go by quick if if we get a suspension but we, like like i said we don't know right now once we know more we'll let you guys know and uh we'll see you next week thank you guys peace